As before, you can follow along with this overview by having your own copy of the PDF file for these slides handy as we go along. In Chapter 3, we're going to start paying attention to the three-dimensional aspect of molecules, and for now, dealing with alkanes and cycloalkanes, but just looking at them in a way that allows us to appreciate the fact that they are three-dimensional objects, as small as they are. And these ball and stick models you see here on this slide are a common way for textbooks to show three dimensions. Hopefully you can recognize both of these as being mo models for ethane, but they're not identical. If you compare these two, the carbon on the left uh, in the top structure, its hydrogens are pointing out at different directions than what they are in the molecule at the bottom. We say that that carbon-carbon bond has been rotated, and that's what accounts for the difference in these pictures. And you have to look close to even appreciate that they are different. But that kind of thing is what we're going to deal with in Chapter 3. We say these are two conformations of ethane. It's the same molecule. They just uh, have a bond twisted relative to the other one. Just like <clears throat> if you are standing up and put your arms in the air or down by your side or straight out, those might be considered different conformations of you. So you're still the same person, you just uh, orient your limbs differently. So molecules kind of do that, that kind of thing themselves and in some cases those differences are considerable. This next slide, a little definitions here. Again, conformations are comparing the same molecule with the same name, but the three-dimensional arrangements are different. And those are arrived at by rotating single bonds. And in, for us, that's going to be rotating carbon-carbon bonds. Uh, single bonds can rotate, and if you build models of any of these alkanes, you certainly can see that those models allow you to uh, rotate those carbon carbon bonds uh, to create a whole host of different conformations. And when we study those conformations, we're generally trying to distinguish ones that are stable from ones that are not, and that's what conformational analysis is all about. We need to be able to quickly sketch out these three-dimensional molecules in a way that doesn't require us to be great artists, but yet we can still communicate those three-dimensional shapes. <clears throat> and for ethane, here are uh, three different ways of doing that. So on the left side, we've got <clears throat> what's labeled as the staggered conformation. It's just shown using three different models. <clears throat> Excuse me. And over on the right, we've got three different eclipsed conformations. Uh, all of those are different ways of drawing the same arrangement. The one labeled as staggered is the more stable. Uh, and it, this picture at the bottom is the easiest way to distinguish this conformation from its neighbor. That's called a Newman projection. And uh, we assume that this Y-shaped series of bonds, they meet at what would be a carbon that's directly in front of the one that's behind it. This larger circle is a carbon that's directly behind the one in, f in front. So we're looking down the barrel of that carbon-carbon bond in ethane, in other words. And what we're paying attention to is how those hydrogens are poking out. And you can see that those hydrogens are such that they're as far apart from one another as they can get. Not just the hydrogens on the first carbon, but how they are related to the hydrogens on the carbon behind it. Uh, this sawhorse, well it looks more like a sawhorse than this eclipse conformation on the uh, right hand side, but uh, we still call it a sawhorse, and again, it's trying to show that the hydrogens on that front carbon, uh, the one that's where they're highlighted in red here, um, they uh, are said to be staggered with regard to the hydrogens in back. Um, the wedges and dashes are useful as well, although it's harder to d see the difference in those two conformations. Uh, these heavy lines represent bonds coming out towards us. The dashed lines are bonds receding back behind the screen, and the regular bonds, the regular lines, I should say, are bonds that are in the plane of the screen. So we'll see some of all of this as we go along, and especially when we want to compare different conformations, we need a good way to be able to draw them so that we can appreciate their differences. <clears throat> 